Welcome to Church New Life Family. We're so glad you joined us today. We're so excited to be meeting with you in your living room, your kitchen, your car, or wherever you are. This morning, we wanna encourage you to make the space you're in church. Raise your hands, sing along, and pray with us. Today, we're going to worship and hear a message from Pastor Todd. Before we get started, we wanna remind you of a couple of things. One, we have a mobile app, and we'd love for you to download it to keep in touch with us. Two, we have several ways you can honor God with your tithes and gifts. You can do it through the app on our website, nlckc.com, or by mailing it to the church. The church address is 801 Southwest 1st Street, Oak Grove, Missouri, 64075. Now let's worship together.
let's keep it going. Put your hands together at home. Darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken Oh, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand in your love, my feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Sing no longer has a place to hide. I'm not 
on, let's all stand on God's promises today. Let's trust in his word. Let's trust in what he says about us, our future, our hope that we have through Christ Jesus. We're thankful for the hope, the peace that you've given us, Lord. We just want to respond to you by lifting your name on high, which is the place that it deserves to be above everything else. Of all things, you are God, and you're worthy to receive our praise. You're worthy of being worshipped. You're worthy of receiving all the honor, the glory, the praise that we're giving you today. So, Father, our prayer is that as we worship you here in this place and you at home, that it would be a moment where you can encounter the Lord, you can connect with God and his Holy Spirit, his presence in this place and there in your home or wherever you're at, that it would be a moment where you can encounter him. We thank you, Lord. We worship you in spirit and in truth today. We're grateful for all the hope, the peace, the joy that you've given us. Thank you.
Stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never, oh, tell me, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. so good. He is the way maker. This is one of my favorite songs because it's a song of hope. It's something all week long God has been pressing on me that he's never stopped working. And I know there's a sense in all of us that sometimes we don't see it. And he says, yes, I'm still working. He says, maybe we don't feel it. And he says, I'm still at work. And so all week long, he's been pressing on me. He says, Gary, I am the same. I'm not changing. And I was recalling that scripture in the Bible where it says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And no joke this morning when I got up and did my devotional, God knew that I was wrapping up our service this morning and bringing this to a close and praying over us. And and this is too good. I can't make this up. Let Let me tell you what my devotional said to you. It says this, it says, you can feel secure even in the midst of cataclysmic changes. You could say pandemic changes. You could say stuff that we're uncomfortable with. It says you can be secure through the awareness of his continual presence. The one who never leaves, 
the one, the same one who never changes. I can't make this up. It says Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then a little icing on the cake, the next thing he says in the devotion, as you release more into God's care, please remember that he'll never let go of your hand. Here lies your security. Isaiah 41, 13, he says, God says, I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. I'm telling you what, God landed that on me this morning and I, he just told me to speak that to you today, that when you feel something going on and even though you can't see it, you can't hear it, just be reminded he's got a hold of you. He's gonna look you right in the eye and he's gonna say, do not fear, I am with you. So this morning, if that is you, I just ask you to hang on to that truth. He is for us and not against us. He loves us and he's got a great plan. I'm gonna pray over our service this morning. Bow your heads with me if you would. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in our midst. Lord, even in this time of uncertainty, Lord, we know one thing's for certain, you're on the throne and you're in control. And so God, help us as we worship you, we stand firmly on your word, that God, that we may live out how you want us to live in this life. May we live out the awareness of your presence. May we live out that you will make a way where there seems no way, that you will make a way to draw us back to you. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this service and your name. All God's people, wherever you're watching, come on, say it with me, say it loud. Amen, amen. Man, we're so glad you're with us this morning. I tell you, it's such a privilege. We're, we're honored that you would take time to be with us here at New Life, whether you're at our Concordia campus, I think I heard you wherever you're at down there, or here in Oak Grove or Kansas City area, wherever you may be, even the surrounding states. We have some people watching in last week. We just wanna welcome you. We do wanna stay connected. And so if you go to our website, nlckc.com, there is a link there that says, get connected. It takes you to Linktree and it shows you all of our social media stuff that we have going on because we believe even though we can't be together here this morning that we wanna stay connected. We have Instagram, we have YouTube, we have Facebook. We have ways that you can just get to know what the church is doing. I'll tell you, even though we can't gather together as a family, we are still impacting the kingdom in our community. We have foster care, we have other needs of our family. And I tell you what, they just keep coming in and we're doing our best to meet them. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for joining with us. So I tell you what, Pastor Todd's got a great message. I don't know this morning if you got up and you just got dressed and you're ready to go, whether you got kids around you or whether you find yourself still in your pajamas instead of kids, maybe you got a couple cats. It doesn't matter. We just encourage you to, to join with us. Listen to what Pastor Todd has to say. I know it'll touch your heart. And once again, just welcome home to New Life. We're glad you came with us. Thanks for being with us. God bless you. Well, good morning. Welcome to New Life. We are so glad you're here. We've already done an amazing time of worship. Um, you know, it's interesting here in a room with me and two of my kids, Mashes a cameraman, a youth pastor, if you don't know who that is. And then no one else. It's weird, like us as pastors, we kind of live off of energy in the room. But So here's what I need you to do. This might sound awkward, but for some of you, this is a good thing. Let me tell you why this is a good thing. Because some of you have been struggling sleeping, and I've watched you in this sanctuary on Sundays take some of the best naps I have ever seen anyone take. So I bet right now on your couch, you are snuggle up, get a binky out, a blankie, and literally you're going to sleep so good during this message. As a matter of fact, some of you, this is your ambient noise in your room. You put on my message, you're to sleep within minutes. I don't really know if that's that funny. There's no one here to laugh. I'm literally laughing at myself. I don't know. But we're going to do this today. Here's what I want to encourage you today also Giving is still a part of who we are as followers of Jesus. This is one of the few promises that the Bible gives us that we can test God in is in giving. He literally says, test me on this and see what I'll do. See if I won't open, open heaven. And just so, 
You know, I, I think giving is an integral part because it's trusting God with the things that matter to us the most. So this morning, we would love for you to be part of giving here if New Life is your home. I get it. Some of you are struggling with work. Maybe you've been laid off. I understand. But if you're able, we still are, your tithe and your offering are a significant part of allowing us as a church to be the hands and feet of Jesus to our community and to the people that need help from us. So you can go on our website, nlckc.com. You can give online there. You can text to give from there. You can go on our app, okay? New Life Church KC, you can go on that app. If you'll, you'll find us, make sure it's our church. Please make sure it's our church. Um, <laughs> please. And just give on that. Like there's push pay. There's multiple ways to give. Or you can mail in. Some of you are like, I don't trust the government. I don't trust all that technology. You can send that in in the mail. 801 Southwest 1st Street, Oak Grove, Missouri, 64075. Allow us to still be a helping hand in our community with your giving. So today I have a message that God has totally downloaded on my heart. Let me just speak to you for a minute about why I'm going to say what I'm going to say today. Tuesday night, the worship team was here and they were going over the set for today and it was powerful. And during one of the songs, God literally, I'm standing, sitting over on this side of the sanctuary and I go to my knees, literally tears on my eyes as I feel like God began to share with me some things for us as a body of what's going on around us right now. Now, hear me, I'm not one of these pastors that's like, I'm Mr. Prophetic, although I do believe God has, you know, used all of us, all of you watching today. If you're a follower of Jesus, I guarantee you God has laid things on your heart, but there are moments where God speaks to me clearly, and I believe it's always validated by his word. Everything that God speaks will be validated through his word. But God gave me such a clear, I was going to speak on something else today. And I literally, the last few days have just been working on something a little different. I don't think what God laid in my heart is anything you're going to be like, oh, what? But I do think there's a reason, a reason why God laid this on my heart. I think he's trying to get our attention for something. So follow with me today. If you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up. Hey, listen, yell amen. Why not? You have nothing to lose. You've been stuck with these jokers for over a week already around you. They've seen worse of you than yelling amen while pastor preaches at church. So go along. I know one thing I love about our church, we had a guest recently that said, man, your people take notes. So do that today. Sit down, take some notes, open up your Bible, follow along with me as we go through. Just, I want to encourage you today. Here's one of the things God laid on my heart. I truly believe that God is using what is happening around the world to draw the nations to himself. Not just New Life, not just Oak Grove, not just America, but I believe God is allowing this to be where as a globe, as the nations of the world, God is drawing people to him. It's easy as an American to feel like that the world revolves around us. But I've been blessed enough to travel around the world and see some of the most godly people in places like Africa and Haiti and Poland and Germany and Mexico, you know, just places around the world where I've seen some of the most humble expressions of faith, some of the best just expressions of worship for people that are desperate for God to move. I believe that what God is doing to draw the nations to him, it's also a call to repentance. I believe God would ask all of us to look at our own selves and to look at our hearts and to look at repentance does not make you weak. It's the opposite. A repentant heart. When the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart, sometimes that confuses me. Like this is a guy that's a murderer, an adulterer, what did he get? Two things that David got. He understood worship and he understood repentance. So what if even when we're done with this today, all of us bow our head in prayer and humbly just say, God, I repent. None of us are without sin. First John says, if we say we're without sin, we make God a liar. No one is watching this today. If you're like, oh, no, 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 wait, no, 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 I've conquered sin. No, none of us have, only Jesus conquered sin. Now, it doesn't mean we have to be bound by sin, but all of us in this room have things in our life that God is still changing us, molding us. What if we just turn this into a 
a call to repentance. Here's another thing I believe God showed me that I honestly believe that we are on the brink of a godly awakening that will sweep this planet. That's a bold comment. I am very reluctant, even like, I believe God is, is allowing this to be, has had the, not just that God made this happen or even that God wanted it to happen. I don't believe that. But if God uses things for his good, and I believe this can cause a godly awakening that will sweep the very planet. It's going to start with repentance. It's going to start with humility. And as God begins to make people realize that how important he is. I read an article this week that said, what are some things that are changing the most uh, that is changing, not just America, but the world through this, this will change the world forever. And it was saying one of the second thing it said that they see the world is changing is are people returning to faith. Now, this was a non-religious article. This, they, the rest was economics. It was, they literally said people is drawing people back to their faith. Last week around the world, more people watched church online, 20 million more people by estimates that even watched the Super Bowl. Go Chiefs, go Patrick Mahomes. Like, think about that. This is a global thing. In America, 20 million more people watch church online than the Super Bowl. Now, I don't know who quantifies these numbers. Nobody called and asked me, but I'm going with it because it works with my message today. If you don't like it, when you preach, you can say your own statistics. But you can feel it. I have received messages from literally all over the world. That is not an exaggeration. All over the world, people saying, hey, I watched something you did on a live stream this morning. I saw something or I heard this. Just God is moving and we need to be ready for this. In Psalms 86, it says this. Among the gods, there is none like you. Starting in verse 8, Psalm 86. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. And they will bring glory to your name. For you are great and you do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. I felt this in my spirit that maybe you're watching this today and you don't even know why you're here. Maybe someone invited you to watch this. Maybe you're a friend of mine on Facebook and you're like, hey, I think this guy's a passion. Let's see what it's all about. Maybe you're watching this later in the week and someone reposted. I don't know why you're watching this, but maybe you're even, I'm not, you might say this. I'm not even really even sure about this whole God thing, but something drew you to watch this. Hey, hey, I know what that is. It's the presence of God. The spirit of God draws people to himself. Listen to what it says in John chapter 12. This is Jesus speaking. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. The prince of this world is Satan. If you, don't, if you want to read about that, Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, talks about a Satan is kind of the ruler of the air. When sin entered into the world, Satan had, has a form of dominion, although God overrides him every single time. And, and here's what it says, and I, Jesus speaking of himself, When I am lifted up from earth, will draw all people to myself. Good news. But for all the words of Jesus, we win, not because we've done anything, but because when he hung on that cross, he said when he's lifted up, he will literally draw all people, not some people, not just the elected people. He will draw all people unto himself. Think about that. The reason you're watching this today, maybe if you're like, I don't even know what this whole relationship with Jesus, that's weird. There's a reason you're watching. Guess what that is? Because when he hung on that cross, he did it for you. He did it for me. He draws people to himself. So don't think you're just watching this by happenstance, by I don't know what's going on. No, God wanted you to see this today. But I also know that in Ephesians 5, it tells us this in verse 15. Look carefully than how you walk, not as wise, but unwise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. Other translation says that scripture a lot of different ways. One says, knowing the times we are to live as wise as unwise, making the most of every opportunity. Uh, me and Mash, 
He's my awesome cameraman. So we were talking about this this week, just how we have a choice through all of this. If God's going to bring about a global movement of people returning to him, then us, his followers, his people need to make the most of this moment. We can retreat or we can advance, but we don't get to do both. Right? Like you're like, man, you're really excited. I am excited because the thought of people that I know that don't know Jesus coming back to him, the thoughts of some of the faces I've seen is I've been able to speak to thousands of people in Africa and around the world. When you see them respond to surrender their life to Jesus, there is nothing better than seeing someone who was lost find their identity in Jesus. But we have to play a part in this. Know this, all of us have a story. Like you, you might feel like, I remember when I was a kid, these evangelists would come through town and they would have these amazing stories of life and drugs and gang life and they face death. And here I am, a little pastor's kid living in Springfield, Missouri. I've never wanted for anything in my life. And I used to think, man, my story is boring. But all of us actually have a story. All of us, from the most hardened criminal to the most like, like bubble-wrapped child all still had something in common. We all need a savior. And these are the times in our life where we can use our stories to share with others how amazing Jesus is. Michael Ketterer was on, I think it's America's Got Talent, all right? And he is an awesome guy, a worship pastor. And he's also a foster dad that has adopted a lot of kids. And I can relate to that. I'm a foster dad, but also an adoptive dad. And if you don't know this about New Life, we have a, a large ministry that reaches out to kids that are in care and families that are taking care of kids. And we want to see families reunified. And it's just a lot that we do because we believe that it's the heart of God that all children should have a home. So he said this on, on the show and America's Got Talent. And I, I saw it and, it and it literally spoke to me so much. Here's what it says. When you're surviving, you can't dream. When you're just like the kids that we've received in our care, many of them are just trying to figure out, trying to make it through the next day. And for many of us, we're so focused on the problem that we're just going day by day. But what about that dream that God wants to birth in you? What about those plans that God laid in your mind and in your heart years ago that now lay dormant because we're so focused on why we can't that we don't realize that God is so big that yes, you can. These are the times where God will use us for unique ways. I believe God is opening up doors that he's never opened before. There are people in your life that I promise you are more open to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus than ever before. They're just, they just need someone that will have the courage to send them a text to begin a conversation, to do a FaceTime and say, hey, can I talk to you about something? You don't have to be obnoxious about it. But we do know that God is the answer. And there's one way to God, and that is through his son, Jesus. But we all have a responsibility. Jesus' time on earth is almost over. And he pulls his disciples together. And in Matthew 28, 16, we read this. We know this. A lot of us that are in church, we've heard this many times. Here's what it says. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted, right? Which is crazy because, I mean, he, he, yeah, he's alive. He was dead. And when Jesus came to them, he said this, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Here's what that's saying to me. We have a responsibility, but we don't go about this responsibility alone. You're not alone. Even if you're watching this all by yourself and you feel isolated and alone, what did he tell you? Surely I am with you always. We have a God, Jesus. He's our advocate that prays for you and believes in you. And right now, no matter what you're facing, no matter how bleak the situation looks, I spoke about it Wednesday night. He is always with you. I would challenge you. If you're struggling with isolation and being alone, you need to see your value. You need to know that we believe, and you go back and watch Wednesday night message about just how we need each other through this. Here's what I believe. We as followers of Jesus should be the last group to run from the challenges we are facing today. 
If we truly believe that we serve a God that created everything in six days and on the seventh day, he took a nap. If we believe that God died, Jesus hung on a cross and he rose from the dead, why do we not have faith that God can get us through this situation? But instead of running from the challenge, we should run to the opportunity that God has placed right before us. In Romans chapter eight, Paul writes this in verse 31. What then shall we say to the response to these things? Guess they're facing all kinds of tur- their turmoil and persecution here in the church. What shall we say in response? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. And he will not, and will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against them whose God has chosen? If it is God who justifies, who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus died. More than that, who was raised up to life is at the right hand of the God, right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? This is good stuff here. Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine? or nakedness, or danger, or a sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Remember this, God has a plan for your life. And this plan is bigger than any obstacle you can face. The Bible says he who began a good work in us will see this work completed. So but you have to do your part. Today, what if we all surrendered our hearts and we began to prepare ourselves for what God is getting ready to do in the earth? I was speaking with Pastor Danny, our worship pastor, and God gave him the same word separately that God's going to use this place, new life, as the nations are going to be represented in this place. But I also believe this is a global movement. Will you begin to prepare your heart today? Will you walk in a place of repentance as you just totally surrender your life. And maybe you've done that, but you feel like this urging. Some of you, I know you've texted me. I mean, I received a great text from Danny Sparks, amazing guy in our church. We're going back and forth, like, what is God doing? And it's encouraging to know that God is speaking to many people about what is happening in the earth today. This is not time to repent to retreat. It's the time to use what God has placed in our hands, the technology that God has placed in our hands and in our lives to make a difference, to be a light in darkness. I'm going to pray. And as I pray, here's what I want you to do. I want us to take, we usually do this for 30 seconds when we're all in this together, but 30 seconds staring at a screen would be awkward. So here's what we're going to do. Take like 10 seconds right now. And where you are, will you bow your head and you close your eyes and will you just examine your heart? Maybe you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. Maybe you need to rededicate your life back to him today. And just know that no matter where you are, his presence is there. Take 10 seconds, examine your heart. I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna say, see you later. As you examine your heart, if you realize that there are things in your life that you need to surrender to Jesus, you need to repent, not just as a repentance of a continuing thing, but you need to repent to really give your life, surrender your heart to Jesus. That sounds like a weird thing, surrender your heart. What does that mean? That means that you say, God, I want to surrender everything I am to follow your plan and your will for my life. The book of Romans in the Bible, Paul writing this to the church of Rome, literally tells him, what do you have to do? Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God sent Jesus to die and rose him from the dead and you could have new life. It starts with faith and he extends grace to you to say, don't get things right before you come to Jesus. Come to Jesus and let his spirit make you right. Like you don't have to be perfect, none of us are. 
But would you just pray with me today? If that's you, you need to surrender your life to Jesus. God, forgive us of our sin. We believe that you rose from the dead, but before that you died on the cross as a perfect sacrifice for our sin and we surrender our lives to you. God, forgive us of our sin and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you truly prayed that prayer today and you surrendered your life to Jesus, would you let us know that? Go on our website, go on our app. There's a place on our app that says, I raise my hand. Would you let us know? We've received some amazing testimonies through this of people responding to the call that God has done great things in their life. They surrender their heart to him. Will you do that and let us know that you did that? And we would love to touch base with you and pray with you. Also, if you want to connect with us throughout the week, nlckc.com, there's a right under the banner, there's a thing that says link tree. That can show you. Here's how you follow. Every morning we go live at 10. We're doing worship at 6. We're doing prayer every night at 6. We have a service on Wednesday. We are not going to retreat from this. Now, don't get me wrong. I can't wait till these seats are packed with you. Trust me. This is a way we are being the church, but I believe the perfect way to be the church is for us to come together, lift each other up. Then we go out, then we make a difference. So, but this is what we have for now. So make the most of these opportunities. You are awesome. Don't forget to go and give. If you can give a little, if you can, whatever, just just allow God to use you. We love you. You're awesome. Be blessed. What an incredible time of worship in the word. I'm so glad you chose to spend time with us today. Until we can meet face-to-face again, be sure you have downloaded our mobile app, liked us on Facebook and Instagram. We believe God has said something powerful to us today. Our hope is that you feel his love deeper today than yesterday. Have a fantastic week.